We've all heard the rhetoric about the September 11th terrorist attacks being the result of an enormous intelligence failure. According to the government, the lack of knowledge about the impending attack made it impossible for U.S. national security to act preemptively and decisively. Of course, since then, an entire industry has been created to bolster the already enormous security and surveillance state. What if the attacks were not just an intelligence failure? What if, contrary to the official narrative, sufficient intelligence was available that should have prevented the attacks? Well, it's an assertion that my next guest has risked his reputation to prove. His name is Anthony Schaefer and is a retired Army colonel who alleges that a multitude of information about the hijackers was available before 9-11. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Good to be on. While in the military, you oversaw a program called Able Danger. What exactly is Able Danger and what was your role in overseeing it? Uh, Able Danger was essentially a special operations command program which was focused at pre-9-11, we're talking about 1999 to 2001, uh, targeting of al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda, as you will recall, was attacking our embassies in, West, uh, in East Africa. Uh, there was a trend now developing in the, the later decade. And uh, Able Danger, simply put, was an operational set, a set of operations designed to essentially identify, target, and then do things to destabilize al-Qaeda as a growing threat. And how much information are we talking about here? Oh, well, we're talking about uh, the NSA issues. All the tools we developed for Able Danger were the things NSA now uses. We're talking about data mining uh, at the time that data mining didn't exist. And that was the whole idea. Since we had never sought to target a global organization that had no geographic boundaries, data mining became the focus of that. And we had terabytes of data on them. And obviously, one of the things as you indicated in the introduction, information was there, it just was never properly shared or integrated with the larger picture of other agencies such as the FBI, such as CIA's data, so we could get a complete picture. And, you know, what was your first thought as someone who had really seen all of this laid out, who had been overseeing this program for a while, what, what did you think when the attack happened? Well, we instantly, as a group, came together and understood exactly what happened. We were worried about this sort of thing happening. And part of the problem was this perception, the false perception that Al-Qaeda, they would never attack us by the fact they fundraise here, they do all these other things that we knew about. We knew Al-Qaeda was here. And they always thought somehow, again, projection, if you will, of our values on them, that they're not really a threat, don't worry about it. And this was uh, the minority, this is the majority opinion of people in DOD at the time, clearly uh, erroneous. And so we instantly knew that there was something uh, that Al-Qaeda likely had done the attack the day of the attack. Hmm. And what happened when you brought this information to Philip Zelikow, the head of the 9-11 Commission? Well, he was shocked. I actually made the disclosure, and this is recorded in my book, Operation Dark Heart. We had a session, and I was undercover in Bagram, Afghanistan in 2003, October. Uh, 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 10 years ago and we actually laid it out to him of what had happened and he felt it was important actually asked me to come back and testify to the 9-11 Commission about the issues and next thing you know uh, I'm uh, essentially shuffled out uh, suspended for minor issues and next thing you know I'm fired and it was we turned out it all was about the fact that I disclosed this information to Philip Zelikow and by his staff's own admission it was a, a, a path they did not want to go down because they did not want to have to basically admit to the fact that they had found Muhammad Atta and some of the other 9-11 hijackers in this database and obviously if we found them we could have done something to prevent the attack. And you know, you, you've said that the commission was a cover-up. What do you think that they were covering up? I mean, just that ineptitude? The, the, the commission, I believe there was a conspiracy. This is where I, I disagree with a lot of the 9-11 truthers. Uh, there was a conspiracy. It's not about the government, our government, U.S. government participating. It's about covering your behind. It's about the fact that there was massive failure, a failure at a scale which continues to haunt us. Don't forget that part of our mistakes right now, 10 years into the Afghan war, uh, 12 years into the Afghan war, is because of this incompetence. And uh, it has to do with the fact that even though we had the information, bureaucrats, some of which are still in the system, uh, went about trying to pre prevent it from being shared properly within the agencies of the government that could take action. So this is what the real cover-up is all about, and that's what I think was the real core issue of why they went after me and tried to prevent this information from becoming public. Do you think that they really cared about their credibility, though? It seemed like they were pretty brazen and arrogant about kind of leading the charge with all these new wars. And well, I, mean, I just find it hard to believe that they would go through such extremes. Uh, not at all. This. this was all about protecting the bureaucracy and the individuals in the bureaucracy. One of the individuals who was actually involved in this was Keith Alexander. He was actually the Central Command uh, Senior Intelligence Officer during the time we were running up to this. So a lot of the folks had a lot to lose had they come forth or been identified as someone who did not 
act properly to share information. And this is the key. Bureaucracies tend to protect themselves. And I spoke to Don Rumsfeld, Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld, in a green room of another network about this. And I, we talked about this. He said, well, you know, we feel we were lied to by the bureaucracy. And he said that that was a common occurrence. So, uh, you know, as much as I had, had to clear the air with him on some of the issues that uh, regarding able danger, because I disclosed this during his watch, he said the bureaucracy commonly lied to him. So let's remember that there's a bureaucracy that's separate from the political parties. And I think that's what we have to always remember, that they will always try to protect themselves. Interestingly enough, Congressman Kurt Weldon in 2005 said the Pentagon uh, or Pentagon employee had been ordered to destroy yes. 2.5 terabytes yes. of data about able danger before 9-11. Absolutely. Again, the, 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 the idea of covering up wrongdoing and, and, and inconsistencies in process is something not new. And so remember, NSA just was recently caught again doing some things to say that they're, they're protecting things, but they're really not. This is a pattern. This is a pattern of bureaucracy. Uh, no political party will ever control this completely, uh, and, but each political party will be victimized by it by the fact that this, this other branch of government, this, this third branch, or, you know, outside the Democrats, Republicans, you've got this bureaucracy, will always do things to protect itself, and that's what we Seen. I just find it fascinating that was before 9 11, yes. destroying this evidence that really pointed to an attack and also just not that one PDB but dozens of intelligence Absolutely. briefings that came out in the New York Times article last year. Let's talk about the perception that people have of Al Qaeda today. Sure. Um, it, it almost seems like now it's used as kind of a generalized blanket term to label anyone who's really fighting against the U.S. military in some of these regions and war zones. What is the true scope of Al Qaeda as it exists on the globe today? Uh, Al Qaeda today is significantly different than it was during the 99, 2000, 2001 time frame. Let me be very clear. Uh, I think 95% of the leadership who were in power in 2001 are now dead or in prison. Uh, so the Al-Qaeda today is not the Al-Qaeda of 2001. It's franchised. So as you point out, I think it's almost a, a label people will throw out there arbitrarily. Let's be very clear on this. There are some Al-Qaeda still in Pakistan, uh, Pakistan uh, Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, is Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, the really big cells of this. They, they exist. And their focus now is destabilizing countries and governments that are friendly to us. They're more focused on that than they are coming after us. Not to say that they may not recover someday, but clearly their focus is different than what it was uh, 12 years ago. And, you know, let's talk about your book, Operation Dark Heart. Sure. Uh, it was, uh, this is so fascinating. The Pentagon, or I'm sorry, talk about how $46,000 of taxpayer yeah. dollars was used to burn copies. I, I just can't believe this. Uh, it sounds like I'm reading a piece from The Onion. Uh, it's, it's hard to believe. And yeah, basically, I was the arm, in the Army Reserve at the time. I sent the, the book manuscripts to my chain of command saying, hey, I'm doing a book. What do I do to get this clear? Because I knew I was obligated to do sure. that. Army went through the process, gave it a clearance, allowed me to publish it. Next thing I know, people in DOD above Army are saying, we don't like this. And they went about doing everything they could to basically draw attention to the fact that they felt there was classified information. This is still the subject of a First Amendment lawsuit now being fought out in federal courts right now. Uh, we're in the final arguments, we'd like to believe, with DOD over this. Uh, the new manuscript has been heavily unredacted. Uh, there's been a lot of victories. With that said, there's still key elements of the re manuscript they're fighting me over. And it was all about the fact that I believe it was more about arrogance and trying to show me that they're in charge rather than trying to actually protect any real classified information. Yeah, or see the truth about really what was known Absolutely. before and not acted on. Um, you know, let's talk about Syria. Sure. Um, you've been attending a lot of Syria hearings on the Hill. You know, speaking of Al Qaeda, here we are fighting Al Qaeda and the rest of the right. world with the war on terror and at the same time a supplying associated forces, right. which I, f I find uh, interesting, especially under the NDA Section 1021, where it says that you can be detained indefinitely if you do that. Right. Here we have our own government doing that. What is this contradiction all about? Contradiction is about that we, ha we don't have a plan. Uh, we have no global strategy. And right now, we have this thing that's going on that people uh, on the left seem to want to be involved in and be helpful, which is fine. I think we should be helpful. It's just that the idea of introducing American forces, American troops to the issue, it's not useful. And I dispute what President Obama said. We're the only country that can do this sort of policing. It's not true. Uh, the, if the French want to do it, let's send the French in. Uh, I, I think that the bottom line is here, we have to be very careful in how we, we side ourselves in this. Uh, as much as I think Assad's a bad man, uh, I think the worst the alternative of having 15 bad men in charge of that region with Al-Qaeda being one of them is probably not a better option. We just need to think this through. 
And Anthony, uh, we have about a minute left or 30 seconds left, but yeah. you've mentioned the third rail, that bureaucratic reigning right. uh, entity. What is that? Well, so much of what goes on in the government is, prof is professional or career bureaucrats, uh, people who sign up. IRS is a good example of that, where you have career bureaucrats who spend their entire lives inside the government. Uh, often, they worship mediocrity, and their, their coin of the realm is process. Everything becomes process, and it's all about trying to basically not do anything bad or wrong, but let's not do anything good either. And so when something goes wrong, they don't want to be blamed for it. Maintain the status quo. Maintain the status quo. Retired Colonel Anthony Schaefer, really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me.